Good afternoon, YouTube. It's Man All Way George Page coming to you live, live on YouTube. Well, folks, this is the end. As you know, Black History Month is it's just about over, you know. And then it's you know it was a month of of things that were going on, some history making that happened, some controversies. But um, like I said, I want to always recognize that Black History shouldn't be celebrated just one day out of the year. It should be celebrated every day for the contributions that my people my ancestors and my descendants, you know, have contributed to this country and people who have ideals that, you know, black people didn't have, hadn't made a mark on this country. You're the ones who are lying to yourself. We have, we've been here for over 400 years. We have been passed over and pushed aside and our, our thoughts, our concerns are never taken seriously until it's time when you need to be put in a position in a, you know, in the in, in in the government, or or just to get some backing, you know, or people who made some comments, and when some black people support them. But anyway, I'm. This is going to be my last um, dedication to somebody of Black History Month, and the funny part is she's not black, you know. But you never know by with some people she next. But this is one lady who is who did fought for the right of our people, and just as people across the world in this country, and this is one Miss. Anna Eleanor Roosevelt, or especially known her as Eleanor Roosevelt. Now, Miss Ro Mrs. Roosevelt was born October 11, 1984, in New York. She was born in a very prominent family. Now, her father was uh, was uh, the nephew of um, her of um, Teddy Roosevelt or Theodore Roosevelt, who was president of the United States around about the good parts of the early um, uh, 2000s. Uh, to, I mean, the early 21st century, 20th century. And, um, you know, she and he, uh, you know, grew up, grew, grew up in a very uh, substantial family, such as known as the Roosevelt. You know, he was a prominent man, but thing he also had issues. She also, you know, grew up with her mother, you know, who wasn't a very a loving woman. Now, as a young girl around about eight years old, her mother died from the theory, which was disease. Of uh, you know, just of, I think it was like uh, I forgot the details of the disease, but she died. It was eight years old, and then two years later, her father died from um, seizure after he nearly committed um, suicide from a, a the fear of your um, you know, um, you know symptoms. Well, he she had two younger brothers, but one of her brothers died because of the fear also, and it was her and her younger brother um, Elliot. You know, I think no, no, it was Hall. Was it Hall or Elliot? You know, one of the, I think it was the younger brother Hall. That was left. And they would live to live. They would stay. They would sit to live with her with her grandparent, with her grandmother, when she was when she was around about um, ten years old. Well, as a young girl, she was a very independent young girl, and because of her, her looks, some people say she wasn't very a beautiful young woman. But from the pictures, she was an attractive young woman. It felt like she was plain. She was often when she was younger, her mother her mother called her Granny, gave the nickname Granny. I got a niece we call her Granny, but that's just you know that's a loving thing. But in her family settings, you know that's considered more offensive. But um, if she's growing up, she went to a uh, uh, girls' school in in um in London, England. But by the time she was seventeen, she was she was brought home to be, as you call it, um, of a uh, a coming out party. Around that time, she was she met a young Franklin Delano Del 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 Lando, uh, you know, um, uh, Roosevelt, which was her fifth cousin. Now, while they were coming up, they you know they fall they fall over each other. And did it for a good while, and he and you asked to marry her around about uh, 1902. Uh, 1902, and then because of that, you know, her, you know, she her her his his mother didn't like him too much. You know, she wasn't fond of her, and um, but eventually the, the two did get married in, in 1905. During that time, he was coming up in the becoming a law a lawyer, and also he was um, venturing into politics, even working for. Um, you know, as a secretary for the Navy under Woodrow Wilson's um, term. Um, by that time, she had her first child, Anna, which was named after herself, and that was her first daughter. And then later on, they had some more children. They had six children all together. You know, uh, four, bo uh, five more boys, and you know, five boys. But one of the sons died at the age of not even a year old, and when he was, um, you know, back in nineteen nineteen. Then two years later, her husband. Um, Franklin was dealing with the uh, uh, polio, which, you know, around, uh, 1921, where he, you know, he couldn't walk anymore. So, you know, and then her and the kids 
you know, later on, when he started, you know, get into politics, we became, you know, looking for the position of governor of New York. Um, he won that position and her and the children moved from their home to um, Albany, um, New York, the upstate New York. But Eleanor wasn't much for society stuff. As she was going to school back in um, England, she was taught to be more uh, about social um, issues and civil rights, you know, and also human, um, you know, growth and stuff like that. You know, she was really taught to be more than just what typically most women are supposed to be a, a wife and a mother. So by um, 20, by after um, um, 1928, Frank decided to run for president. And being that he'd be the second Roosevelt in the family to run for the position, as you know, um, te the, um, Teddy Roosevelt was his, uh, his fifth cousin. So, and, um, you know, he, he, he ran for the uh, position around 19... 32 and amazingly he won you know even though he was dealing with his um polio and people saw him weak and sometimes he wasn't taking pictures of him when he was walking with, without um assistance you know it was a uh, you know people didn't you know being one seemed like, like being weak but during that time eleanor also had her ideals she believed in women's suffrage she believed in the rights of of the working class and of people and she was really a crusader for that you know now later on you know teddy who also supported the rights of the individuals. So as you know, at the time we became president was the time of the Great Depression, where they fought to try to save families and they created a new plan called the New Deal when he went, became president around 32. And the New Deal was to help those people who were going through with, you know, with minimum wage, the increased minimum wage, create social security and also social services. And Eleanor, she supported also one thing when doing an issue that time where there were um, issues with the rights of black Americans. But her husband didn't support it too much like he should have being president. And because he often catered to the Southern Democrats because they needed his support. But Eleanor, usually sometimes she would go off her own travel, you know, talk to people and families and even, you know, ask people what they need of her. And if so often she, like her husband used to do, she, he'd come on the radio and talk five side chats. So did Eleanor. Well, by the, um, mid, pretty much by the, um, 30s, Eleanor was really prominent. You know, we respect her rights of the fighting for the rights of the individuals, especially for black Americans. She did a lot for black people at the time. She, there was also, she passed, she tried to, uh, you know, she tried to pass an anti-lynching law against hanging of, um, you know, black people, especially during the turbulent times of the 30s, uh, where, you know, black, black people, we still, even after the end of slavery and reconstruction, we still had a time. But, you know, Frankly, he didn't really support it like he should have, and so that um, anti-lynching law was often, you know, blocked and denied. Still in today, which is now the Emmett Till lynching law, it's still denied. But she was, she often worked with several prominent leaders, as leaders of uh, the NAWCP and several other groups to try to promote, you know, opportunities for blacks and equal, equal opportunities. And also supported the, the rights of black soldiers, black military people, to have the same right and in, in, in anti, -segregation, in, anti segregation in the United States military. She even supported the Stiggy Airmen um, program, which she donated money and often offered help. She even, there's one uh, video picture where she flew in, flew in, a, in a plane with one of the um, early um, uh, pilots of the Tuskegee program. And she did a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, supported women's rights, blacks' rights, anti Semitism. She, this is a woman, she did a lot. She was often she was hated because she wasn't considered the stereotypical first lady. She really stood up for people's rights and her rights and her beliefs. You know, some, some, some first ladies often put the stuff to the side, but you know, she didn't. But by 1945, around by the time of the um, early ages of the, um, the mid age, the mid towards the end of the um, World War II, uh, Franklin died through of a seizure. And then, you know, she was no longer first lady. And, um, uh, Franklin's um, vice president, Henry S. Truman, became um, uh, the president, and you know then he offered her a position in the um, the with with the United Nations, but also she told Truman to try to end segregation in the military. Truman was hesitant for a good while, but eventually he ended segregation in the military around about the fifties. And even though she was no longer um, first lady, she still uh, you know promoted her rights of of, of human rights, working with the, with the UN working with um, other groups and trying to push equal opportunities for both men, women, children, and people of different faiths and ideologies. She even supported still political, her political beliefs, you know. 
even though she, you know she was getting up in age, she still believes that people should be treated fairly. You know, and even though you know her uh, her love and respect for her husband, you know they were their marriage was more of a marriage convenience. And you know if you know the stories that often you know Rosary has several affairs, but she stood beside him even when his time with his dealing with his illness. She even this is here with, with the great late Martha the King. This is telling you that, you know, people talk about the, the the white saviors. That's a true thing. But also people who really believe that everybody has the right to be treated fairly. You have to respect them. Well, Miss Roosevelt, you know, kept on until about the uh, up to about the 60s. She even worked with JFK, you know, during his term of president from 61 to 63 or to, you know, 62, actually, when she got sick and was dealing with illness because she was a woman of many years and she had some complications at the time she decided to she wanted to be sent in the hospital so she decided to go back to her home in um in manhattan and where she died peacefully with friends you know and this was an amazing lady i mean you know the stuff she did for this country and people hated her because the fact was she wasn't what you call the stereotypical first lady but you know what she really fought for the rights of all people Especially during the Great Depression, the fight the rights of women, the rights of um, black people. I mean, that's why I want to recognize her today because the fact is she needs to be recognized. And you know what? There's some people I think some first ladies. There's would compare to I would say uh, maybe like Michelle Obama, um, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton. I mean, you know, it was she was just one of those great ladies. But you know, but her death was on November seventh, nineteen sixty two. And, um, you know, she was just a real, you know, um, you know, just a, full of life, you know, and she achieved so many things, you know, she wrote writing books and columns and, and, and keeping up with social, um, awareness, which some people are not doing much as they should, especially in politics, but you have to respect a woman like Miss, um, Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. But I, you know, like I said, we need to recognize her, you know, especially in our community because, the things that happened in her time, you know, she made it happen. And if you know, even though her, even her husband was president, he could have done better, but he had to do what he do because the guy was more of what we call, a, you know, uh, you know, just a realist. You know, in the reality that, you know, especially in the times of um, segregation and and, um, and racism, it's hard to try and make change. Even today, you know, it seems like time is going back to those days of, you know, you know, just hate and and just you know feeling that one people one group of people is superior over other but miss mrs roosevelt was a great lady and i think she needs to be recognized for what she has done you know and if you hate her that's on you so i want to say thank you mrs anna eleanor roosevelt for what you have done for me and my community you see me all the way to your page like don't like subscribe don't subscribe i'm out